Hello, this is Raziel Cohen with NDFTrading.com, and today we're going to be talking about Condition Gray. Now, I hope this ends up being somewhat of an entertaining video because there's going to be two parts to it. The first part is I'm going to be talking about a product that Condition Gray offers. And the second part, I'm going to be talking about a recent course I've, take, I've taken with them and the different things I've learned and have taken away from it. Um, that's a really big part as being an instructor and as being a shooter in general. Anytime you go to a class and you take a bunch of notes, you have to be very critical with yourself to figure out what went wrong and what I could do better for the future. So I definitely took a lot of notes and there was a lot that I've gained from that class. And I kind of want to break it down with you to maybe see if there's something that you can do and maybe a course of fire you can try that could help you improve as a shooter. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is that Condition Gray offers a lot of um, very interesting products. They're a law enforcement based company, which means that they're uh, often targeting law enforcement officers specifically, but obviously there's a lot that they have as gear that can really be um, beneficial to you. If you are a law enforcement officer, they actually recently dropped a really, really cool product where there are these high visibility placards that you're able to wear that if you're um, undercover or if you're just someone who catches themselves in a bad moment and you're a law, law enforcement officer, you could end up strapping them to yourself and making yourself much more visible than if you were just kind of in civilian clothes. So that's one thing that's very interesting. I got in touch with them because one thing that I was looking to do for a long time was figure out a different way to set up my gear, specifically the placement of my tourniquet. My tourniquet, I always had different issues of the placement of it because it ended up being too bulky and it would be protruding too much and it would really affect the way I'd be able to, to get it and generally just set up my gear. I've always had an issue with tourniquet placement. A while back, I saw how people were offering different options for um, attaching a tourniquet to the front of your holster. And initially, I didn't really like the idea because um, for me to be able to reach across my body to be able to grab a tourniquet didn't seem like a really effective and good option for me. Um, after I got in contact with them, they said, let me send you uh, two different um, uh, retainers that you're able to try out and try it out for yourself and see if it makes sense and if it would work for your gear. And after trying it out, first of all, the comfort of being able to have it kind of out of the way but still accessible is really, really nice. And also understand that these are not just retainers just for a tourniquet. They have two um, like recommended options of how you're able to use these retainers. The first one is going to be like this one right over here where it's set up to have your tourniquet right in front of your holster, which is again, really nice because it's out of the way and still able to be relatively accessible. I would still personally carry, well, you should in general carry at least two tourniquets on you. Uh, first of all, just for different areas of access. Secondly, if you end up, God forbid, getting shot in a, um, in your high thigh area or anywhere that you have a lot more muscle, um, you might oftentimes need two tourniquets to be able to stop the bleeding effectively. So having two tour tour tourniquets as a minimum should be something you should, you should carry. So that's the first option that they have. The second option that they have is more like on this rifle where you're able to use it to have your sling retained in one spot. There are a few different ways that people have shown that you could have your, your sling retained, but with those options, you don't often get quick accessibility. So it might be a good option for storage, but to have quick access to it is not the greatest idea. So if, again, if you're a law enforcement officer or if you have your gun for the bump in the night uh, kind of setup, having a sling that's properly retained but quickly accessible is a very, very good thing. And this is definitely one of the products that will get you there. There's honestly not much to say about the product just because it's a very simple and creative idea that re resolves a very annoying problem. So the fact is I like products that are simple. I like products that are, products that are affordable and actually get the job done without making all this other like bling that doesn't actually um, being effective for your purpose of use. So in that regard, I think this is a great product. And if it's something that you're using, if you have a rifle or if you have a, a if you're a duty uh, law enforcement officer and you're looking for a option to have a tourniquet on your holster, this is definitely the place to go. Another thing that might be worth mentioning is depending on your department and depending on your uh, your holster, sometimes if you disassemble a holster, you're not going to get a good warranty on it or the warranty gets void. Having something like this is just something that wraps around the holster, which means that you're not affecting any of the, the parts or components that go, into, uh, that go into the holster. So this, again, is kind of one of those things that could be very beneficial to you um, if you're looking for something that will just resolve a simple problem without modifying anything that you have. 
Now, I know I might seem like I'm trying to rush through a lot of information, and that's because I am. I'm trying to avoid this video being over 15 minutes because there's a lot to talk about. In fact, I'm going to be splitting up this video into two parts because there are a lot more things I'm going to need to say about the course and things that happen at the course that could ultimately be very beneficial to you. So to kind of go through an overview of what the class covered, um, this was a counterterrorism course, which we focus on a lot of shot placement and accuracy and speed associated with it. The lead instructor, his name was Chris. He was a really, really awesome guy and a very knowledgeable guy. A very quick way of being able to determine how knowledgeable a instructor is, is when you ask a question and there's no uh, definite answer. What that means is that during the class, he presented a certain way to perform a drill. And then I asked him a question. I said, I was always taught this method. What do you think about that? And then the good answer would be, it depends. There's never going to be an exact defined way to be able to perform a drill because it's always going to be situation specific. So for example, we were practicing getting to the um, the kneeling position. And when we were doing that, um, I mentioned that you guys probably have already seen that in a recent video, I talked about how to get to a knee. He was showing a very different method of being able to do that. But then he explained also that my method might not be effective if you're going to be in between cars at a Walmart and you're going to have much less space. So it all comes down to location and mission specific. There's never going to be an exact way to be able to perform a drill uh, because each situation is going to dictate it for itself. So that's a very nice thing to be able to hear from an instructor where they're not telling you this is the way it is. That's the only way to be able to do it. It all comes down to it depends, but also being able to hear the pros and cons of each situation really shows the knowledge of the instructor, which is something I really appreciated. So we started off the class doing something called the Diablo drill, which is a drill I'm definitely going to go more in depth in a future training video. And it was pretty much meant to test your speed, your accuracy, and your recoil control, which was all very, very interesting. Um, I'm going to post a picture of the beginning of how I performed, which I was very, very disappointed in. Um, I clearly haven't been doing enough dry fire practice and structures with my left hand grip. And that's where the, the my first issue came up, which was the control of my left hand, which again, the instructor had... Um, showed me different ways to be able to grip my gun. Now what ultimately came down to is that I'm using, I was using a stock Glock 19 and I'm usually able to feel much more comfortable on a Glock 17 because my hand is larger. But because of that, I was compensating for the style of my grip, which ultimately was actually being a negative thing. So he showed me a few methods of how to tighten that up to be able to make a better difference. And here's a picture at the end of the class of how my groups tightened up. It's still not perfect and I still want to improve on it. But based on the methods that I learned, I was trying to pick up a lot of different things that he was showing me, which were really important and trying to cover that within the short period of time um, was obviously very difficult. But these are all things I'm going to ultimately be practicing more of to be able to tighten those groups and be more effective as a shooter down the line. Um, so there were a lot, a lot of different things I'd want to cover, but there's a few things that were specifically important that I want to mention. I teach um, the way you pull the trigger a very specific way. Primarily because a lot of the way, a lot of the people that I'm training are brand new shooters. And the thing I'm trying to train them out of is shot anticipation, which is usually the number one reason why new shooters miss. So the method I've always taught was you bring the trigger back, breathe in, breathe out, click, reset the trigger, breathe in, breathe out, click, and do it over and over again. This is an effective method for new shooters who are trying to learn the basics of firearms fundamentals and be able to gain proper knowledge of proper trigger press. What it came down to though is that if you're a more advanced shooter and you're trying to get fast target acquisition and faster shots on target um, effectively, that's not the proper way to actually pull the trigger. And that was a mistake I have created into a bad habit. The way you ultimately should do it is right when you fire the gun, on recoil, you should be already resetting the trigger and prepping it for another shot. Doing that will be able to help you get much faster with your follow-up shots. So we ultimately, at the end of the class, performed a really cool drill that I'm gonna post some clips of right now. And what it ended up doing was showing me the groupings that I was putting together and how you should be able to ride that trigger to be more effective. Uh, again, there's a lot that I'd want to cover for this class, but I'm going to stop it kind of here with that kind of information. Um, another thing that you guys have probably seen if you follow me on Instagram is I had a huge, huge issue when it came to my uh, holster. I was using a Sapphireland ALS and it ultimately got very locked up because of the sand that they, we, were, we were training in in that environment, which brought up a lot of questions, a lot of discussion with Sapphireland customer service, which ultimately was all resolved. Um, but I really want to go into that in depth for itself because that deserves its own video. So 
stick around for part two because there is a lot more I'd like to cover in the future. And um, if you have any questions on what happened so far or anything you'd like me to cover more in depth in the next video, please leave a comment below so I'd be able to cover that with you. This is Raziel Cohen with ndftraining.com. Thank you for watching.